Now let's talk about backup and restore. Backup and restore is typically needed to recover from corrupt data. And data can become corrupt either because you have a bug in your code somewhere or because you possibly got hacked by some attacker who entered into your system and corrupted data. Detecting that you have corrupted data is a very hard domain-specific problem. In other words, usually the way that it ends up happening is a customer calls you on the phone and says, hey, I'm looking at my information and the phone number's not right. Or, you know, there's something not right. My zip code isn't right. And that's usually how you find out. Because you usually don't have people that are analyzing every record on a periodic basis and would even know if what's in there is right or not to begin with. Right? So detecting that you have data corruption is often very, very hard to do. Once you have detected you have corruption, then you might consider going back to a backup in order to restore your data to a known good state. Well, in order to do that, you have to be backing up your data periodically. So you back it up periodically so you can restore it to a known good state sometime in the future. Um, note that when you do the restore, the restore usually incurs some downtime. So because you're going to be changing a bunch of records in the database, a lot of times you might have to shut off access from your users while you do this restoration. You can try doing restoration on the fly while things are changing, but then you have no real guarantee that somebody's not changing something that's corrupt, and then they're causing more corrupt data, and you're overwriting that with the restore code. I mean, you can see there's a lot of race conditions here that can cause more problems. Um, and restoring also typically means there'll be some data loss. If, let's say, you back up your database every hour, even, then you, know, you backed it up at 1 o'clock, and between 1 and 2, people have made changes to it. Um, at 2 o'clock, you would do another backup, but let's say at 1.50, somebody says, oh, I've detected corrupt data. Well, if you go back to your backup at 1 o'clock and restore it, you've lost all the changes that happened between 1 and 1.50. Right? So you lost 50 minutes worth of data. So, you know, just be aware that there's really no good way to do a restore and make sure that there is zero uh, data loss. There's probably going to be some amount of data loss when you do a restore. Also note that many databases don't support making a consistent backup across all partitions. If you're using especially a NoSQL database, you usually have to go to partition 1 and back it up. Go to partition 2 and back it up. Go to partition 3 and back it up and so on. So you're backing them all up separately and individually. And if you have some relationships between partition 1 and partition 2 data, well then that's not guaranteed to be consistent. So the backup and restore can really be quite a challenge for uh, certain services. Uh, so you need to think this through a lot as well to make sure that you're coming up with a plan that really works well for you. Right? Um, and one of the things you can do is try very hard to avoid any cross-partition relationships. That way you don't have to worry about inconsistencies between the backup and restore of the different partitions. Another thing you consider, can consider is not making a full backup when you do make a backup. Instead, you could maybe make a full backup on the first of each month, and then every time you do another backup after that, you can do an incremental backup. That is only backup the things that have changed, um, not the entire database. Uh, that's great in that the backups will be a lot faster now, but it's not good because when you want to do a restore, you will have to restore from the beginning of the month, the first of the month, and then you'll have to replay back all the restores from the incrementals until you're back into a good consistent or you know, state again. So the backups end up being faster, but the restores end up being slower is the end result of that if you use an incremental backup uh, pattern. Okay? And another thing is make sure you test restore. I know a lot of companies where they have done a whole backup and restore thing, and they do backups religiously, but they've never actually tested the restore path. And then all of a sudden, they find out they have some corrupted data, and they say, well, let's, thank God we've been making backups. Let's go to the backup and let's restore it. But it turns out that maybe the backup got corrupted, and the, so they can't do the restore. So there's either a bug in the code, which causes them to not be able to restore things quickly. They have to fix the bug first and deploy that out. Or if the backup hasn't been going well and has been writing bad data, then you can't do the restore at all. 
So it's very important that not only do you write this code and that you make sure backups are happening, but you test the restore code as well to make sure that it really works for you because you want it to work when you need it.